think I've been fascinated with people all my life, actually. I think if, if you'd have been someone who'd have been in my class at infant school, you probably thought, Al's a bit odd. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy who didn't come to our school for very long. He had um, a, a brain tumour and he wasn't going to stick around at school for, for long. And I, and I knew that and other people didn't know that and he was losing his, his, his eyesight. And I would sit in, in the, in a break time and just read to him because he, he couldn't read anymore. And I found that more joyous than actually kicking a ball around. And, you know, he once said to me, well, it was the last time he spoke to me actually, because I'm not, I won't be coming in tomorrow and I won't be coming in the next day or the day after. And I said, no, I'm okay with that. He said, so am I. I never saw him again. He, yeah. It was a privilege to have that space with that person. So I've always had that gift. I was about five or six. I just sort of recalled that. You could probably see me sort of being moved by it, yeah. But it's always been, to just connect with people in that way is just beautiful. It's also, I think no one else would do it. And so that was a strange thing. But actually, it almost like, well, it, it's going to be me and it has to be me. And it was, and I learned so much from it. Well, also, the thing that was amazing was actually that, you know how you said how about some people don't tell you that someone has died? He knew that that was going to happen, and he told me that that was what was going to happen, and he was okay with it. That's pretty awesome. You know, he'd made his peace with, it, with you know, his, his short life, and actually... He was one hell of a wise guy for someone who'd have been about five or six. It's like, wow. So it was a really important learning experience for me too. There was also, there was a, a, a girl who I was a, a friend with, and that was also at infant school where she had, she had epilepsy. And she had, um, and it was, it was, it's, it's quite difficult to prescribe anti-epileptic medica medication to, to children when they're that sort of age. So the, the medication was still sort of being worked out because I had no idea about that sort of stuff. But actually she, she had an epileptic fit on a, on the school like, concrete playground. And I'd sort of put her in the recovery position and gone to get teachers and stuff because they, you know, you know what they call midday supervisors and stuff like that it was just like, wow, you know, you know, I just, it just, to, you know, to be helpful, <laughs> to be, to be kind, to be, yeah. Why wouldn't you, actually? What, else, what, when, what are you supposed to do in that situation but that? That's what it feels like for me. It's actually, you know, why wouldn't you? But actually, I can't see the world from anyone. You know, this is, you know, my, what am I here to do? To, I think it's to help people be better people. To sort of, you know, my, the name Alistair, is, is the same as Alexander. It actually means protector of the people. You know, that's a good name to have, if that's what you want to do with it. I think the problem with protection, it can sort of mean like you're sort of doing this as opposed to encouraging, facilitating. But that doesn't mean to say I don't have my own gripes, my own issues, my own fears, my own... I think that with my own sort of life journey, there's this point where you know when you're about three four five six i had and i might still have you know weak muscles in my eyes so you have a bit of a squint and people go 
you know, they point at you, they, they ostracize you, they single you out. And I had quite bad eczema and quite a lot of allergies. That means that you are aware that you are not normal. <laughs> <laughs> and that does, I think I was also quite shy. You know, he'd speak to me, I'd go red. And I think that encouraged me to observe to in some respects withdraw actually people weren't necessarily very nice i was okay with that i think what what happens when you become or and i became sort of 15 16 17 18 is actually it becomes apparent that you want to fit in and then there comes a point when you go the things that people like about you are actually the things that stand out by my head coming to a point and stuff like that <laughs> but, but um I was at a, a do with people I worked with at Neil's Yard Remedies and it was fascinating to be sitting around this table of about 20 people and I don't know who it was who brought up in this conversation but actually said, what is it about yourself that you do not like and they said this around the table and, I, and it was really amazing that the people the things that they said they didn't like about themselves was actually the things that other people liked about them it was fascinating so someone would say, I've got big gums, I've got big teeth, I've got big nose, or I've got a wonky eye, or I laugh too loudly, or I'm too gangly and tall and clumsy. And actually, it was incredible because we would literally just sit there and go, but that's what we love about you. The bit that makes someone stand out is actually, and it was, that was a revelation for pretty much everyone sitting around in that room. You know, we spend the first years of our life trying to fit in and then realizing actually it's the bit that makes you stand out that's the bit that makes you individual i suppose that's also why i was drawn to a medicine that actually focuses on individuality it focuses on our uniqueness you know we've all had colds we've all had headaches we've all had hangovers um but our body responds uniquely to the environment in which we're in and homeopathy taps into that uniqueness that's probably why I was drawn to it more than most other forms of healing, actually. Now I've had time to reflect on it. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. It's, it's a ramble. I've been rambling. Yeah, babes. That was flipping amazing. <laughs> you've had me crying. You've had me laughing. <laughs> Well, I nearly cried about it as well. I'm still thinking about that kid in um, infant school. It's quite a moment. The um, my class teacher and the headmistress were sort of fascinated by that sort of interaction and. Um, I don't think they'd seen that before. And that's quite cool that actually, that I, that I had that want. You know, it was actually, it wasn't just useful for him, it was useful for me too. You know, it was, it was a dynamic interaction. It's, it, it wasn't, it didn't feel necessarily like some kind of selfless act. It's actually, I learned so much from that person in a very short space of time.